Hey there everyone, today I'm going to share with you some top eats for Taipei. As an international foodie capital, Taipei is a dynamic city of modernity, street food, and fusion foods. Virtually any diet will be able to find a Taiwanese dish to tempt their taste buds. Now, what better way to see the city than through the food? So today I am going to take a food tour where I'm going to see the city sights and its food through Taipei Eats. What's the flavor of Taiwan? Are there many flavors or popular flavors? So, we get this question a lot like it's really difficult to have like a main dish in Taiwan because it's like we have so many different variations of food yeah. but you get a lot of that um, a little bit of sweet profile in our savory food and we also like to mash a lot of a mixture of flavors which the contrast boosts the other flavors like my grandma would use like um, what pear or like apple they would uh, put salt on it uh -huh. so the saltiness boosts the sweetness of the apple and the pear oh. So that's how you get sweet, uh, sweet things to taste sweeter. One of my favorite street snacks is called scallion bread. The Taiwanese, however, know it as the thousand layer bread due to its many layers. You'll often find the Taiwanese are queued up for it. Slightly salted. Scallions in it. Crunchy but spongy. Mm. Glutinous rice with the inside having um, sesame powder and peanut powder on the outside. This is one of our most favorite desserts. So you find stands like this everywhere around the city. Next up is stinky tofu and it's a favorite of Taiwanese. Why do they call it stinky tofu? Well, it's kind of smell. You smell from a distance. Exactly what you smell is what you're going to get in your mouth. Wow, that's a very distinct taste. I want to say that it smells like stinky socks. I'm gonna go in for a second bite. See if I can't get used to it a little bit more. That second bite was better. I think it's like one of those things where you keep trying it. You start to like it. So people in Taiwan, a lot of people complain that it's not as stinky. I had a strong flavor as before. I myself, I would like, I would like it to have a strong, stronger flavor. A lot of them use the flash, flash rice, right? So they ferment it for a really short time. So it doesn't have that strong flavor that it used to have like 10 years ago, like long ago. We like it stinky. They want it stinkier than that. Well, the, 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 the snow is pleasant for us, so we want to say it's stinky. <laughs> I think I still I need a breath mint. I'm still I'm oh, really? smelling I'm smelling that sticky tofu. <laughs> Guan bao or the Taiwanese sandwich is typically made of a bao bun with braised pork. And you also get the cilantro peanut powder combination, which is really Taiwanese. Mm. They made mine with vegetables. Very There's just a very sweet flavor to it. And it's complemented with the peanut powder and combined with the cilantro. Oh my gosh. It's like a knockoff. I'm gonna try this. That clump of chili is either doing good or doing wrong. But it's still good. Actually, I think I'll put more sauce. So these are cold noodles with um, some sesame dressing yes. and a, some bits of garlic. And this is a popular Taiwanese hangover dish. The noodles have been cooked in very hot water and then immediately cooled off so that they separate and kind of produce a spongy feel. This cheesy blinking sign is to let people know that the store sells betel nut, a mild intoxicant similar to having a can of beer. It gives you a bit of a buzz. It doesn't have any tobacco in it, uh, but you bite it. The top. Put it in the top. And uh -huh. for a while. It doesn't taste that good. It's bitter, bitter. It's like it tastes like bitter plant. Like a taxi drivers, bus drivers who are really into this. And you'll find it like even like in India or uh, Burma, so you see these red stains everywhere. Eventually, if you eat enough of this, it can 
It could stain your, your teeth um, and give you oral cancer. It's supposed to give you that uh, feeling that's equivalent to drinking a, a can of beer. Yeah, I think I'm starting to feel a little heady. A little lightheaded. It's a little short of breath. Um, very relaxed. I'm starting to feel relaxed now. I've always been kind of curious but afraid of trying it. At a food tour though, you know you're at least under guided weight trying this. Here I am at Baimen Fong Ling Bing. I really had to go slowly there. Bing is ice and this place is known for their sorbet. They make their sorbets daily fresh. It's made through water and sugar and it's turned and turned and turned until they get the texture and the flavor just right. And if they don't have the texture right or the flavor right, then they toss it out and they start all over again. Yeah. She's just packing it in. So I ordered the salted plum sorbet with the pineapple. Some of the popular flavors here are like taro, mung bean, um, dragon eye, pineapple. These are all the flavors that you would not suspect sorbet to come in. A perfect ending to my day was found in a teaspoon. What do you feel is distinct about like Taiwanese food that's like different from every place else in the world? Uh, probably that we don't have a big dish like a um, national dish. We have a lot of small dishes. Yeah, a lot of street snacks. Do you feel like there's any kind of distinct thing that's you know, like how some just a variety of food, maybe. Variety of food, yeah. Okay. And Jean was right. Variety it is. Taipei has several night markets, which showcase endless varieties of food and street snacks. So I'm at Rahe Night Market. Um, it's New Year's Eve, and the streets are packed. You see, like, the tables and chairs set up in the middle of the street. It's a huge food night market. The foods that you'll find here are kind of what's in vogue in Taipei. Each hawker has their own type of style, their own sauces, as well as flavors. Sometimes they even prepare it just differently. There's a general rule of thumb when you eat. When you're in Taiwan, if you see a crowd, it means that the food there is really good. Taiwan is the home of bubble tea, a drink loved by Taiwanese and travelers alike. This milky tea was originally designed with tapioca balls so that you could chew your drink. It's xiaolongbao in China and it's tongbao. She's calling it tong, which is soup, bao, which is, you know, a bao, a dumpling. Uh, so there's soup inside here. Yeah. Okay, so a little bit of ginger. And then this soup, I mean, this other sauce in here is kind of like a vinegar soy soy sauce see, see inside there's like that's all soup okay but it's hot i always burn myself when i eat it i want to call these like taco balls they're like squid and like little balls deep fried mm. oh my god this is amazing well you can taste the garlic Ooh, good. Mm. these are amazing try it time The snack of the century for me. Taipei has a handful of night markets for those who want to shop and eat on the streets at night. One of my favorite markets is Shilin Night Market, a healthy dose of Taiwanese drinks, jellies, dessert snacks, and Taiwanese delicacies. Oh, it's like regular Which is egg. tinier? The sauce is what makes the flavor. For 30 NT dollars, I got um, these candied tomato slash plums. Tomatoes, I didn't know you could candy them. Wow, but these are really good. There's a hard candy coating on the outside so it crunches when you bite into it. And I can taste the plum. It's kind of almost like a leading plum, I want to say. Tomato, acidic. Very sweet and plumbing taste. I wish we had these at home. Wherever home is when I travel. But this is like a deep fried squid. So it's got garlic and some cilantro in it. And it looked really soft when he was cutting into it. Mmm. Wow, this is 
really kind of soft, right? Mm -hmm. Do you feel like it's buttery? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not overcooked, that's for sure. So he cooked it just yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Because the laundry really nails it in. And the garlic chunks, it's kind of raw garlic. I love raw garlic. But all that just kind of seals the flavor. So this is mian shin. Yeah. Mian shin. And it has oysters, this is like fish cake. Then there's these noodle things and uh, Chinese parsley. And they put vinegar in there. Mian is uh, noodle and shin is like a string. This is a favorite dish in Taiwan. So this is like really gooey and it's kind of hard to get the, the noodles on this spoon. It's kind of, I taste fish flakes. Bonito. That's exactly what I tasted. And then you can add more garlic or you can add more vinegar if you want to. So it's an interesting flavor. It is an interesting flavor. And the, because the noodles are very gooey mm -hmm. and with broth that's kind of pasty. And you get the, yeah, I know, it's like thick. Yeah, it's not a soup, it's not broth, it's kind of like this thick. Yeah, and then I, I like the um, Chinese uh, parsley, the cilantro. That's, that's not, yeah, that's exactly what I like that I taste. I feel like it can really fill you up. Yeah, that's probably why it's cheap and filling. That's it. Like, that's it. So I got some chikangao, which is this mini bread cupcake. It kind of tastes like a little bit of an egg sweet bread. The bedroom prepares it like fresh, it's hot, it just makes it right there in front of your, your eyes and heats it up. These can be pretty addictive too. So thanks for joining me. If you enjoyed this video, you can give me a thumbs up or like, subscribe to my channel, wherever that subscribe is. Click on it. And until then, travel safe, smart, and fun. And may the girl be with you. So yeah, I feel a little buzzed right now actually. That was not was, even five minutes. Yeah. It, uh, it, it was like that. People would I would not be trying that any other time other than that. <laughs> but it's cool that I got to try it.